This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. I'm coming to you from my gorgeous Colorado day. The weather is perfect. I was able to clean my fence this morning to get it ready to be sealed. And it was so satisfying. It was so satisfying to clean the fence and watch it turn from a gray to a natural color. And there were so many grasshoppers in my yard today jumping at me, wanting to interact. It was so serene. And I do it first thing in the morning before everyone wakes up and walks their dogs and all the barking and wanting to make conversation. I started at 6 a.m. as soon as the sun rises. And then I was all the way done by 9 And then I was able to get a protein ice cream and sit by my water feature, ride a little bit, take in all of the sounds of nature before the neighbors come out and, you know, how all that goes. And I'm so grateful for that. I am so grateful. We have so many things to be grateful for. And I wanted to talk today about being open to possibilities. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because oftentimes when we are striving for something and we feel like we're doing all the things, we can get frustrated with results not coming or feeling like we should have something that we don't have. And what I want to remind you of is that everything is divinely timed and everything is divinely guided. I trust the process of life. I saw a meme. It was so funny. Someone posted this meme that said, does the process know we're trusting it? (laughs) And I know it feels like that sometimes. But even in whether it's work, whether it's your spiritual practice, whether it's a goal you're striving to accomplish, whether it's a relationship, all things in divine timing. And since I know that, there is no reason to get upset. There's no reason to get frustrated because I know that if I'm every day making conscious contact and I am following my guidance and I am doing the things that I should be doing on a daily day basis that I'm guided to do, if I'm working toward my goal, then the rest is handled. And a lot of times we can go on past experience. So if you tend to lean toward past experience and use it as a confirmation or even a punishment of today, that's not always the way to go because you're living in a new time. If you're on this path, you're always going to a new level. And I heard T.D. Jakes once say, new level, new devil, meaning that as you go to a new level, you've got new challenges that you must overcome. And this is how we grow. And so a lot of times people in the ego will try to say, well, you don't have that because this, that, and the other. No, actually, you don't know that. You don't know that. So Why are you saying something that you don't, are you God? No, you're not. So if you're, you're God, you don't know. And I'm not talking about people that are being used by God to deliver a message to you, because when that comes forward, it resonates and it hits you in a different area of your body because it's an intuitive message. It's an intuitive guidance because God does use people. I'm talking about people who are just throwing stones and judging you so that they don't have to step onto their own path and deal with their own stuff. And so When you are feeling like things are not working out, when you play the what if game, and a lot of times we play the what if game to scare ourselves, which is one way to do it. It's not the most beneficial way to do it. What you can also do is play the what if game in a positive way. So I'm just making this up. Maybe the thought pattern is, what if I take this job and I don't like it? Flip it and say, what if I take this job and I love it? What if I take this job and another opportunity comes that's even better than this job? There's all ways to spin it, to regulate your nervous system and to reach for a higher feeling thought. That's the work of Abraham Hicks. Always reach for a higher feeling thought. Why? Because vibration is measured by our emotions that we emit. That's why if you're ever all blissed out and you're in the best mood ever and you're driving in traffic and someone cuts you off, it doesn't even, it doesn't phase you. You just keep moving And you're like, well, don't know what's going on. Now, if you're already having a bad day and that happens and you're already in a lower thought, there could be an explosion because your vibration is already on that level. There's a resonance and it's powerful. And so this is why the sooner you can shift your your resonant being with your vibration, the better you feel. And we don't know what's going to happen. I know the world is a mess right now. I mean, some people choose to participate in the culture in a negative way. So some 
star came out with this song. I saw nothing wrong with this song. And people that I'm connected with on social media were saying that the song was racist and all, and they were so wrong. They don't know the man. I'm looking at it from an objective view. The man is talking about the point of the song way before he ever put it out and his feeling. And I can look at his chakras and I'm just like, you're, you are looking through that lens and you feel that way because you've got that going on and that's why you're exploding. Cause they were, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was like watching high schoolers in puberty, like arguing back and forth and all this explosive bullying behavior over someone you don't even know. <laughs> I mean, it's maddening to me. You don't know the man. He's not personally impacting you. If you don't like the song, here's a here's an idea. Turn it off and go do something else and go about your life. And it's those type of people that are constantly looking for an occasion to be offended. If you deliver a message and your intent is clean and pure, it is not your responsibility to clean up someone's filter that they were offended by it. You can apologize and say, hey, I'm really sorry. That's, that wasn't my intent. That's not in me. I don't know. But some people are going to be offended no matter what because that's the vibration they resonate and live at. And if you live your life trying to please other people and tiptoe around everyone's offense, everyone's offended now over everything. And it's because their vibration is so low and their chakras are so dirty and they're not doing the work to elevate themselves. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to take care of yourself, your own chakra, how people treat you as their karma, how you react is yours. My goal on this planet is to have a light footprint, to have a beneficial presence, to be integrated into the world, but not be of the world, not hole off and separate and take my daughter and remove her from the world and go live, you know, how am I going to help anyone like that? No. Our job is to be integrated into the world, to reach the world, to be the light. The light that is inside you lights the world. It inspires people. And we've talked about before, just your presence can give people a healing. And people that are at a huge mismatch, it can give them a little bit of a healing crisis because they haven't done any work. It pulls those things out. So you want to protect yourself, of course. But when you are being, when you're on a path of making daily conscious contact and waking up and saying, Thank you, God, for all you've given me. Thank you so much for waking me up. I know that my job here is not done. How may I serve? What would you have me do today? And listen quietly and pay attention to your body for how you feel, the feelings that come in, the hits that you get, the intuitive hits that you get, and follow that. And this is, this is the other example that I give, and a preacher gave it to me years ago, is when you're driving at night in a car, the headlights illuminate so far in front of you. And when you get to that spot, the headlights reach to the next whatever feet or however far out goes. So you're given the steps as you go along. We don't have it all figured out. And who knows, over the years, as I'm on this path, sometimes it feels like what you're trying to get takes forever. And then once you finally get it, you realize all of the synchronicities that happened in order for that to occur just the way it did. And you realize how everything had to line up perfectly and how there was a divine plan. You can look in hindsight and think, wow. And a lot of times it feels like we're striving towards something for a long time. And then once we finally get it, it just we feel like we've had it forever because there's just a knowingness. There's a parallel clicking that occurs. And then you forget about how you were frustrated and waiting. And that's just part of life. So my thing is, are you open to being wrong about things? Because the way that we learn is by being neutral and open, not having rigid ideas where you should do this and you should do that. Anytime people are doing that to you, they're projecting anyway, they need to stay focused on themselves. <laughs> Unless you're asking for their opinion, which most of the time you're not. You know, as, as we've continued on this journey where the planet is evolving, the vibrations are wonky, it's really interesting because I've watched people get worse where I've gotten better, but it was a choice. And I'm grateful for it because life has beat me up and I've been in a blender just like the rest of us. I really have. But I used this time to get really clear on my path to take my spiritual practice to the next level, to continue to take care of my body. 
to do the hard things. You know, I don't go out drinking and drugging and I don't stay out late. I prioritize my sleep. I prioritize my meditation. I prioritize eating well. Those are not things that the collective typically does. And more and more, especially as I'm getting a little older and the reflection from other people and also the feedback from my daughter really helps me to realize that I do live a life of a one percenter really because of my schedule and the discipline and being very much organized and focused. You know, I'm not here to numb out and the collective is typically wanting to numb out. How can I have entertainment? How can I, you know, instead of focusing on pushing my path forward, I want to find ways to take me out of my body. That's the collective, right? So through all this, I've gotten better and I feel lighter and I feel more in alignment because it's a choice. And what I wanted to say to you is, as long as you are there, and even it doesn't matter if you're off the path, if you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm off the path. I'm not doing all the things that I could be doing. This isn't an, a podcast to beat you up. It's to say the fact that you're aware that you're not on the path means that you're on the path. <laughs> Because people that are unconscious don't realize it. Or, you know, they might have a feeling where they're unhappy and instead of doing something about it, they stuff it down. If you're listening to this, that's not you. And so God has the reins. We're just participating. And we chose this before we came in. So do your very best to stay in gratitude. Make conscious contact. Listen to your guidance. And if you're going to play the what if game, flip it the other way too. What if everything works out perfectly? We don't have the divine plan. We know the world's a mess. We know it's getting worse. We know it's getting really nutty. We know people are having outbursts. We know all that. If you're trusting your intuition, then you know you're always, your life's guided. You're going to be exactly where you're supposed to be, wherever, at any given time. You're going to be exactly where you are, on plan, on purpose, divinely guided. And you're doing your best. You're holding yourself accountable. How do you hold yourself accountable? God holds you accountable through your intuition. So if you act on that, you do your inner reflection, you meditate, you look for opportunities to serve, to uplift people, to make the world a better place, you take care of your body, all the things that we talk about doing, it's going to be okay. It's going to work out. And let's stay open to miracles. Not that we're trying to force it. We're being open. We're doing what we're told and we're being open. We're following the path. And as long as you're doing that, it's going to be okay. Let's not get discouraged. Let's stay open and let's stay elevated in faith. That's the walk that we chose. All right, let's go into a healing. You can uncross your arms and legs and focus on your breathing. Okay, and so it is. You can start coming back into your body. And I could feel the energy of 
someone or multiple people where you're just worn out and you feel very exhausted. And what I'm saying to you is you're seen and you're heard. That is the reason for this message today. Hang in there. Hang in there. It's going to work out. And I want to wish you a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.